project. The state didn't have insurance on the bridge. So uh, we'll just have to wait and see who's going to foot the bill for it. But at any rate, the new I-90 span likely to be open in three to four days rather than the three-week delay we were told Exactly, the but that's with fingers crossed because, as we all know, as they do more investigation tomorrow once daylight comes around, they may find more problems, but hopefully they won't and they'll be able to shore things up. And uh, in four days, we could see traffic flowing again. All right, Jim Foreman out there, the old I-90 bridge tonight, Jim. Well, for the next several weeks, crews are going to try to assess the damage to the new Interstate 90 bridge caused when that old one collapsed. One group is using high-tech diving equipment trying to survey that damage. King finds Lisa Machette went out with that crew and brought back these exclusive pictures. The voyage to see what's on the bottom began in late afternoon, loading special equipment onto a tug that would eventually take us out to the I-90 bridge. Researchers from the Pressure Products Group developed this device, which will take underwater pictures and send them back to a video monitor. By nightfall, the small diving device was put to work. The first images showed snapped cables on the new bridge, ripped apart when the old bridge went down on top of them. Then, dramatic pictures of the old bridge, now in pieces underwater. These, these are some of the holes that they cut in the side of the bridge. This is, uh, if you remember when, if you looked out on the old bridge, um, yeah, we're coming up on the guardrail section. There's a uh, sort of uh, just more broken reinforcing bars here. The picture is coming from a camera which is on a remote controlled. Uh, vehicle that goes underwater. It has four thrusters on it. It's used to maneuver around underwater. Meanwhile, on the surface, another section of the old bridge crumbles and sinks into the water, and with it, more clues as to what happened to the lake's first floating bridge and what it will mean for the future. On Lake Washington, Lisa Machette, King 5 News. That remote diving camera will help transportation officials act fast to protect that new I-90 bridge from structural damage. Well, Mike, so far tonight, the problems on I-90 have not caused terrible commuter tangles for people returning home from their holiday weekend. The barriers are up and drivers are finding another way home, but it is Sunday night. Lori Matsukawa reports on the nightmare that could come tomorrow morning. The best thing to do is to avoid using the floating bridge. Here are routes you can use around Lake Washington. On the north end, go along Bothell Way and then use Ballinger Way or 145th to get to I-5. On the south end, take I-405 around Renton, which hooks up to I-5. The carpool lanes on 405 are open to vehicles with two or more occupants. Of course, if you have to go across 520, here are some other tips. You can call Metro and go by bus. The Metro number is 447-4800. Number two, you can carpool. Get on the phone now and talk to your neighbors or fellow workers. Number three, talk to your employer about staggering hours. If enough businesses stagger their work hours, there won't be that big jam between 6.30 and 8.30. Metro Transit Director Paul Tolliver says they'll be putting 20 more buses per hour on east side routes. But the best advice is to be patient and leave the house an hour early. Lori Matsukawa, King 5 News. Metro will have to ask 25 to 40 employees to work on their days off in order to handle the commute. King 5 will help by beginning our exclusive Metro traffic reports at 5 in the morning throughout the morning. Well, the old bridge survived 50 years of storms and heavy traffic. Now, why did it suddenly break apart and sink this morning? The state transportation engineers don't know the answer yet, but some facts are clear tonight. Contractors working on the north side of the old bridge had cut hatches to gain access to the floating pontoons inside, and they attached plywood buffers to keep the water out. When the inspectors checked this morning, though, they found one of the pontoons nearly underwater. Now, the weight of that water pulled the pontoons down and tore away a huge section of the bridge. The pontoons began filling and sinking until six of them hit bottom. More may follow. The original I-90 bridge opened in the summer of 1940. It became part of the longest-running transportation fight in the country. With traffic jammed on the bridge, the state wanted to build a bigger highway, but mass transit advocates kept the project in the courts for years. Finally, just a summer ago, the state shut down the old bridge for repairs, and traffic crossed the old span that day, as it turns out, for the very last time. Governor Gardner flew over the bridge this morning, then watched the bridge go down later in the day and said, my state, it's falling
Well, he joins us live from Olympia tonight to talk about the monstrous commute problem we will all face now, the loss of the I-90 bridge. Governor, good evening. Hi, Gene. Can you assure that the bridge will be repaired? No, I can't assure anything of that kind. I just have to hope that Washingtonians can react to a crisis as they have in the past, and this thing will work itself out in terms of people getting to work, to school, and what have you. Well, Governor, what about uh, federal money in a case like this? I think San Francisco found out when the Nimitz Freeway collapsed there just wasn't much federal money around to help. Well, what do you think is going to happen? Well, it depends on the circumstances. None of us know the answer to that now, but it is part of the federal highway system. And as such, would qualify for $90, $10, but we have to determine the cause. Was it storm-related or not? And those are all factors that have to be worked out. One quick thing. My major concern right now is aid for the thousands of people in the state from Whatcom County all the way to the southern border who are disenfranchised from their homes, lost their automobiles, and so we're going to work very hard to make sure that they get some assistance. Governor, you have a lot of work on your hands. I know the state budget is uppermost in your mind, and you just added a lot of uh, big figures to that budget, so we wish you and all the people you represent in western Washington tonight a lot of good luck. Thanks for joining us. Thank you very much. So the bottom line, 110,000 commuters who use the I-90 bridge each workday will have to find another route for at least three days till that new span is reopened, and likely years before an old span would open again. And in the meantime, while commuters find alternate routes, the Evergreen, a north route, or a south route around the lake, fingers will be pointed to assess the blame. That, plus repairs, will undoubtedly cost millions. Well, Gene, as the governor just reminded us, the sinking of the old Interstate 90 bridge is not the only big news today. Next, we're going to show you what raging torrents did to one ship and the damage all over western Washington. And ahead, we begin a special environment report on poaching. We'll look at efforts to stop a multi-million dollar illegal business. More than the Achiever. It is important to remember that all cars follow the manufacturer's recommended maintenance schedule.